Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. In the first story, we'll tell you why it's better not to mess with the owner of a cab company. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. Don't screw over your cab driver. Note, this is not my story, but my father's. My dad runs a small cab company in our city, and it does fairly well for itself. As with any job with active customers, though, dealing with people can sometimes be like dropping a cinder block on your toes over and over. Annoying. Painful. And it makes you wonder why you keep picking up the cinder block. One day, my dad, who's dispatching his drivers, gets a call from a guy. We'll call him Andy Dick. Mr. Dick calls up my father and requests a cab, gives his name, address, and time of pickup. Everything goes smoothly. My father probably relaxed a little as it all went well on the phone instead of the unusual antics with some customers not knowing where they are or can't pay or something. So my dad calls up his driver, who has a real name, but we all affectionately call him Duh because he was about as intelligent as a bioluminescent mushroom, and sends him to go get Andy. Duh goes to pick up Andy Dick, only to see him hop into a discount cab. The effort called two cab companies at once. This is a really scumbaggy move as it wastes the driver's time and gas. Cab drivers don't make a whole lot of money, and a lot of what they do make goes into gas and food. Andy Dick was being really inconsiderate. It's unfortunate, but this happens a lot with various customers, so Duh calls my father back and tells him the situation. My father calmly says, all right, I'll take care of this, and writes down Andy's name, number, and address on a sticky note, then plays the waiting game. Sure enough, Andy calls two days later and requests a cab from the same address. The conversation went as follows. AD, hey, I need a cab at address. F, no. AD, what do you mean no? What the hell's wrong with you? F, the last time you called me, you called discount cab at the same time and got into their car. You wasted my time, my gas, and my money. You will not call us again. AD. Hey, F you, man. That was my brother, not me. F. Well, it seems that you and your brother need to have a long talk about being considerate to other people. Click. My father hung up. Then came the revenge. My dad waited about five minutes, called both discount and yellow cab, and canceled his calls. Same as tow truck operators. People call, they drive sometimes 20 plus miles, and the call cancels as you arrive or are on your way there. Waste of time, fuel, and pay on the driver. And our second story. No appointment, no problem. I'm essentially a courier, but for a large volume of smaller items or larger items that won't fit conveniently on a FedEx type truck, the company I work for consolidated shipments at locations, groups them into large shipments which I deliver to the end delivery point. It's a value add rush type of service that conforms to track supply chains for medical slash aerospace industries, our bread and butter. We operate on some expensive tariffs and contracts all agreed to before we carry anything on board. So I'll drive 500 or so kilometers per day and visit 10 to 15 places either delivering or picking up stuff to move. I generally visit the same places almost every day. You get to know the guys and ladies on the docks, and they won't delay you, you don't delay them. I'm also paid by the hour with overtime, so while longer days aren't a deterrent, I do try to maintain some work-life balance. Last spring, I get a newer customer added on my route that was going to make things kinda tight in the day, both in distance and time. However, the stuff they ordered regularly was hazardous material, that only left me and another driver legally able to carry it. However, the product struggles paled in comparison to the huge pain in the butt this customer was to me right from the start. Now I have thick skin. You just have to let some crap slide. But if you screw around with my earnings, I'll cut you. Unlike all my other stops, which typically are small warehouses or retail sites, this was an industrial plant in a rather large compound. I Google mapped it before so I knew what I was getting into, but from day one, I was letting the boss know how much this was going to impact my route. So my first shipment day came, and I planned on visiting this place in the middle of my route for the day. So there's a few trucks ahead of me, and after 15 minutes of waiting, I arrive at the outer security gate. Me. Hi, I'm here with three skids of product for XYZ Company. 
Security. What's your appointment number? Me. I don't have an appointment. Security. I can't let you in without an appointment. Who are you here for? Me. XYZ company. I'm basically a courier. I never work with appointments. Security. You need an appointment. Everyone has one. Relents and calls some shipper person who I guess vouches for me. Yeah. I get told where to go and plant. Security. Now I need you to put on the PPE the site requires. Hard hat, reflective vest, eye protection, safety boots, long sleeve shirt, pants, ear protection, and gloves. Me. Holy F. I had it all, but who drives in all that crap? All that for a few minutes? Security. I can't let you on site without the required PPE. Now sign this lengthy form with all the site rules. Security. I'll need ID to sign you in. Me. I hand over company ID. Security. I need a second ID since this is your first visit. Me. I hand over my TWIC. Security. This photo doesn't look like you. Me. No kidding. I have a beard now. I haven't seen my chin in years. Security. Okay, you're registered now. Drive over to gate D and they'll let you into the loading area. Finally, almost 30 minutes passed from the time I pulled up. I'm into the inner sanctum of this plant, get unloaded, and make my way to the same guardhouse to exit. Time for round two. Security. Is the trailer sealed? Me. No. Security. Why not? Me. I was dropping off your product. Now I have other deliveries to make. Security offers some suggestions to speed up, blah, blah, wear your PPE, have an appointment number. So all told, it took me almost 90 minutes to visit a place that would normally take me 15 to unload. I call the boss as I'm leaving to let him know how hard this is going to impact my route. Stuff's going to have to shift around if this is a regular occurrence. Boss asks me if I logged the time spent. Of course. Well then, let's bill for the delay. Four times 15 minute blocks at $60 per, $240 added to the rate charged. That should get noticed. Our tariffs give 30 minutes free per stop. Afterwards, it's charged per 15 minutes. Tariffs agreed to by all parties before we carry anything. So the above repeats itself a few times over the next few months. I know the routine well after the first, but it's still taking almost 90 minutes to get done. And each time, I'm billing my delay time dutifully, while following the site rules to the letter. After several months, I get to my unload point and there's a white hat. White hard hats are usually management or other non-labor staff there I don't recognize. He asks me about all the detention pay I'm putting on the bill. I inform him how I'm an LTL driver and our delays start after 30 minutes and I'll often spend that waiting in line to get in. I explain that even today I'll spend at least an hour of detention depending on how long it takes to get out. Him. That can't be right. He holds my paperwork hostage for almost another 30 minutes until returning in a huff with another sheepish looking white hat. Him. Showing me where we agreed to this. We are your customer. You should be working to keep us happy. Me. I'm sorry, but that's between you and the business office. I can provide my boss's phone number so you can discuss this further. But I really need to be leaving. I have many other stops today. Finally, I'm out again, this time billing 90 minutes of wait time, $360. Explain to the boss man what went down and how the jig is up, monetary penalties have been noticed. Boss told me later in the day how this angry VP tore me up for being generally unprofessional, not addressing his concerns, and dragging my heels making the detention claims higher. My boss stood up for me explaining that I complied with all site rules, never broke the speed limit, 5 miles per hour, but site slash security slash check-in policies were the contributing factor to each detention request. In a huff, the VP canceled all deliveries until further notice. Well, this was Christmas for my boss. Now we can just store the products that are still arriving at hazmat storage rates to boot. Few more weeks pass. Oh, I'm going back to XYZ Company? Boss. Yeah, but notice the address? Me. Oh, they moved. Next door. Boss. Yep, deliver it to the outside warehouse. They'll move it in. Take this email with you. Besh, you don't even have to check in. Just drive up to the exit ramp. They'll just let you in like they do FedEx, UPS, Canada Post. So I happily roll up to the exit gate, get out, see the same lovely security people, explain why I'm there, email in hand, they succumb to reason, and with minimal delay let me in. 15 minutes later, I'm merrily on my way, back on schedule, getting home at my regular times. I let the boss know it seems resolved, and it remains so until the end of our contract with them.
And our last story. I posted a picture of these people stealing my neighbor's pumpkins. My neighbor decided to grow some pumpkins for her front yard for her grandchildren to make jack-o'-lanterns. For months, she would go out and water them and make sure insects weren't getting to them. It was really nice seeing her get outside once in a while again. One day, I noticed this man and woman taking her pumpkins. I knew neither of them were one of my neighbor's children and that my neighbor wasn't giving the pumpkins away to other people. We talked about the pumpkins earlier, and she said she was relieved because she had just enough pumpkins for all her grandkids. So I confronted them and said something like, Hey, those aren't your pumpkins. They ignored me, so I repeated myself, and the guy said something to me in a different language. I didn't know what he was saying, but the way he said it didn't make it seem like it was something nice. Then they grabbed the last couple pumpkins and took off. Before they left, I was able to snap a couple of pictures of them, but unfortunately didn't get a clear image of their license plate. When my neighbor got home, she was so sad to see all the pumpkins were gone, the poor lady looked like she was about to break down crying. I told her what happened and that I had some pictures of the people that took them, which I gave her. A couple days later, I was talking to her and she said she went down to the police station, but that they didn't care because they were just pumpkins. We decided to post the pictures on my next door neighbor account asking if anyone knew them and to DM me if they had any information. I didn't add any context about what they did, just the pictures of them with the pumpkins in front of my neighbor's house and a picture of their car in case people recognized that too. By the time I got off work, the post had gotten popular in town though and people had recognized the couple. There were also comments from others explaining that these people had stolen my neighbor's pumpkins other people had already reposted the pictures on their Facebooks and started to contact me personally through my account for more details. The couple publicly apologized, but people are still saying some pretty awful things about them. Then there were a couple of posts saying the original poster was a piece of crap for posting it, knowing it could cause these people to be harassed. But I was really just trying to help my neighbor get her pumpkins back. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.